Mr. Griggs' work. Mr. Griggs worked at the old post office. He was pretty old himself. He had spent millions of minutes of his long life shuffling through letters, watching the pictures of the stamps change, punching his first-class puncher, weighing fat brown boxes, and listening to long tales about the letter that never got there. Mr. Griggs loved his job. He thought about it almost all the time. Now and then, Mr. Griggs would be washing up his supper dishes when he'd start thinking about the fruitcake Mrs. McTackett had sent her sister 15 Christmases ago. That fruitcake had never arrived, and in the middle of his dishes, Mr. Griggs would wonder, where is that fruitcake? Some nights, he'd lie in bed wondering, how much would it cost to mail a one-pound ounce to New Zealand? or a three-ounce letter to Taiwan. It was hard to not get up in the middle of the night and go find out. And at times, he just couldn't help himself. Even when he went for a quiet walk in the woods, Mr. Griggs couldn't stop thinking about his work. When a blue jay zipped over his head, he'd think, Express mail. When a squirrel darted up a tree with an acorn in its mouth, he'd think, Special delivery. The little holes in the rotten maple tree would remind him of his mailboxes. He couldn't even look at a chipmunk without remembering the chipmunk stamp of 1978. But Mr. Griggs didn't mind. He loved his work. One day, Mr. Griggs became sick. His head ached and his stomach hurt, and he lay in bed all day long. It was the first time he'd ever been too sick to go to work. And now someone else was taking care of his post office. Someone else was sorting through Mr. Griggs' letters. Someone else was putting pennies and nickels in Mr. Griggs' drawer. Someone else was taping up the corners of one of Mr. Griggs' ragged parcels. Someone else was doing Mr. Griggs' work. Poor old Mr. Griggs felt like a dead letter. But the next day, his headache was gone and his stomach was better. He was still tired, though, and because he was moving slower than usual, he was a little late leaving for work. When he finally showed up at the old building, in front of it stood Mrs. Emma Bradshaw, Box 98, Mr. Frank Shrewsbury and his son, Junior, Box 171, Miss Sue Ann Huckaberry, Box 10, and young Bobby Bricker, Box 21. Mr. Griggs was so glad to be back that he shook hands with them all and nearly squeezed the dickens out of young Bobby. Then he unlocked the door of his beloved post office. He settled himself behind his little window, and to Miss Huckabee, who was first in line, he said almost gleefully, First class or parcel post? He ran his fingers over the old letter scale. He sniffed his stamp drawer. He lined up his meters and punchers, and he glanced lovingly at all the brass mailboxes lining the wall. In all the world that day, there was nothing finer than Mr. Griggs' work.